biggest gripe at Micah Parsons is Micah Parsons to me. Right. This is just Jesse Holly. Is probably the most selfish player on this football team. Mm. One of the reasons why Micah Parsons does not want to play linebacker is too much of a responsibility. Oh wow. Mm. Definitely more responsibility yeah. for sure. I gotta study harder. Mm-hmm. I gotta now look at keys and formations and all that. See when I, well, see when Micah get lined up yeah. and just go get the quarterback, mm. and I'm not calling him a dumb player. I'm right, not calling right, him right. dumb at all. True, true. There's no thinking in that. Mm. That's pure natural instincts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You saw in the game when Micah had to drop back in coverage, yeah. fish out of water. He didn't know yeah. where to turn. He didn't know where to look. Right? And even when Micah plays off the ball, he ain't reading nothing. He's just going. Yeah. He's just yeah. going. And so linebacker requires you to be able to adjust, be able to have you gotta really hone in and focus. Micah, and maybe it's just the youth in him. Yeah. Micah doesn't want to study. Mm. Micah doesn't want to focus in. And I truly believe Micah wants to be great. For Micah. And if the team just so happens to profit from his greatness, then cool. Cool. But I'm not willing to have my greatness sacrificed for y'all. Yeah. Do you think he'll be uh, better in that position? Like as, in linebacker just in, in reading? No, I know. Or his, do you really no, think, no, like, I, do you think he'll really be the most effective? Or do you think he can like grow into that and actually become that and, and be more effective? When I watch Fred Warner. Right. Uh-oh. Yeah. When I watch Fred Warner, this is a great example. I see a dude who is so locked in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who's I mean, knowledge wise, is so locked in. If you just did sheer athleticism for athleticism, right? He don't stand close to Micah. Mm-hmm. He ain't strong yeah. as Micah. He ain't fast as Micah. He don't jump higher. He don't lift nothing. Right. But this up here, mm-hmm. he laps Micah. And if Micah ever was to get into the Ed Reed, Troy Palomalu, school of film watching, right. Ray Lewis school of film watching, uh, uh, Fred Warner school of film and watching. watching. Yeah. Right, he could play anywhere. Mm, yeah. The problem is he doesn't want to because he said, well, I've already had success doing this and right. I'm about to get the biggest bag in NFL history doing simply this. Yes. One of the reasons why he's always going to finish second and third to those other guys in defensive player of the year award because he don't want to play in the run game. He don't want to play in the run game. Mm. And the Miles Garrett's and the TJ Watts and the Nick Bosa's and the and the Max Crosby's, they are down in, down out players. Mm. They play the run, they play the pass, they understand what they're doing. Mm. I think that is for me, that is the biggest part of Michael Parsons' game. That and, and again, it, it could come to a level of maturity. Yeah. Right. You know what I was gonna ask you, did those yeah. other players like grow more into that or were they off the back? They no, they that, that's job. who they were. Like that's like Fred Warner, yeah. that's who he is. Like yeah. those guys. Like Ed Reed, that's who he was. Ray Lewis, they, those guys yeah, understood yeah, yeah. that in order for me to be great, I had to have the most information that I possibly could. But Micah is one, he's the OG. Okay. He don't got no OG. He's the OG. Yeah. He he dictates what happens around here. I've questioned it many a times. Um, when I watch the Niners play defense, I see a defense that Fred Warner is taking these guys and say, yo, yo, I, I know the day's over. We're going to stay 45 minutes longer. Yeah. I don't believe Mike is doing that. I don't believe he's the OG that's saying, yo, come, yo, 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 uh, 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 Clark, yo, uh, so and so. So, hey, defense, we going in here after practice is over and we're going to put another hour in. Yo, yeah, and matter yeah. of fact, yo, y'all go home, take a shower, kiss y'all wives, y'all babies, y'all girls, y'all whatever. Meet me at my crib at eight o'clock. I'm going to have a chef come by every, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm going to have a chef come by. Mom's gonna cook up something. We're gonna come over there. We're gonna we're gonna bust this film down. Yeah. He ain't doing that. Yeah. It's like, yo, I'll see y'all on Sunday. <laughs> I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to do. Now, when I do what I'm supposed to do, y'all gonna eat off me because they're gonna double triple team me. So y'all gonna eat. But all the other stuff, nah, I'm not, I'm not I don't wanna sack. That's why he had like when he went and had to play linebacker, he he got on his podcast. He told anybody and everybody, I'm you, I mean, I could just be more effective anyway. I don't need to be at linebacker. Da, 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 da. When he got upset early in the season, why? They had him doing these tackle in stunts, and he was the guy that had to, he was stunting to get the other guy open. Oh, he like that. No, 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 no. I'm not getting him open. Yeah, Stunt yeah. to get me open. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. And, and I'll say the last thing is, and you hit on it, it's a culture that is built in Dallas, right? The Hollywood culture. Yeah. Um, and that's never going to change. Right. I don't care what coach you bring in. You can bring in Bill Belichick. Don't yeah. matter. I don't, it doesn't matter. 
Because Jerry Jones established that we are the biggest brand in the world. It's a gift and curse, you know. Uh, I mean, if you Jerry Jones, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, the gift is you got the biggest brand. You're going to keep making money. It's going to be like the, the Hollywood of football or of sports. But it also affects the players, you know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> I, I've been saying that for years, man. As soon as you put on the Cowboys jersey, as soon as you get drafted, you automatically at the highest level. You know what I'm saying? And for with sure. anything, once you get into that spot, like with anything, it's, it's going to automatically affect your mental and the way you look at it and all that. And I think that comes down to some of the issues that we have. You Do you think saying? that there needs to be more of a discipline with this team, Who? especially moving forward? Who's going to discipline Micah? The culture of today's Football, right, is a selfish culture, and I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing, yeah. right? But it's a selfish culture, yeah. And when you're here in Dallas, what you end up happening is you got 53 brands, yeah. You that's got 53 thing. brands. <laughs> that is the gift and the curse. Is yeah, that I yeah. got 53 brands. Micah has a widely popular podcast and I'm not saying do your podcast yeah do it do, yeah. I'm not saying yeah. I'm, listen my brother, I ain't gonna mm -hmm. never tell you not to make your bread make yeah, your yeah. bread do what you do but there's 53 brands yeah and when you got 53 brands you got 53 dudes that you gotta try to rein in yeah to be unselfish unselfish and really to see the greater goal outside of themselves yeah and it's difficult when Everybody's telling me I'm the greatest. Everybody's comparing me to LT. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. saying that I'm the I'm the nicest thing since sliced bread. That's nothing to humble you. So so yeah. so so now and again, like like I said, who is his OG? 